Hello, hockey fans. Hey, Hattie, how you doing? Drop the Gloves, episode 16, brought to you by the good folks at Underdog Nutrition. If you're looking for an extra kick for your goals this year, you need to get the most out of your workouts and nutrition plan with Lipicide IR. You want to optimize your fat loss, and that's where you're getting. So you're, you're, you've probably started the goals that you have set, the, the resolutions for the new year, and you're like, ah, I should, I mean, I should be losing more weight faster. Not me, not me, because I'm not doing that. We're at uh, big loss. We're going with the red again. It's till it fails me. That's what we're going to stick with. But if you're looking to optimize your fat loss, you need to let the folks at Underdog Nutrition help you out. Lipicide IR will increase your thermogenesis. I have no idea what that means. It will boost your energy and mental focus. It'll aid in appetite control. I'm going to say maybe similar to like a cigarette or a, a, a big old mouthful of chaw will without the negative side effects. It'll help with water retention, which apparently is good. And you get the most out of your hard work and breakthrough fat loss. Another word, I don't know what it is. Plateaus, maybe. Uh, flavors, it's available in raspberry lemonade or uh, oh, the Catalina mixer. So you might be asking yourself, Kevin, how do you know this? Because I have went and I have liked the Underdog Nutrition Facebook page. Go there, like it. All the information you need to know, the posts to help you get the goals you want to achieve in 2022, that's Underdog Nutrition. It's what they do. That's where you need to go. That's what you need to check out. Okay. We have reached the end of the first round of interviews so far. We sat down with another young man from Eagle River, Alaska, Logan Dudinsky. Uh, it, it, it's more of the same. It's, it's a, a high character young man that Coach Hayes reached out to. He's buddies with Tucker Lean. He, he gets into it, he, he outdoorsman, uh, talks about his goals and stuff he wants to get to. Just, you, you shouldn't be shocked. It's, Ethan's brought another, Ethan's brought another uh, great young man to the community and he's, he's a big son bitch. So 6'2", in his shoes, I think he's seven foot tall on skates. So he, he plays hard and he's got gray hair. So you'll, he's got the hat on now, but you'll, you, you get to the game, you'll see kids got, kids got gray hair. And then the first of the re-records with the interviews that I screwed up in the past because we didn't have the microphone, but Tristan Baker sat down with this. And it was actually, it's cool. I think it's going to be cool to go through with some of these young men for the second time because early in the season, you're just kind of throwing questions out there with a lot of, just a lot of assumptions and not knowing them. And having, you know, spent these 36 games watching Tristan play, we get into the OT winner he hit against Helena, which he he remembers very well. And I, I talk about what I saw from my seat, and he gets into what he saw on the ice and the, the pass from Sejaw. And it's, he, uh, he had a big smile on his face retelling the story. It's pretty cool too. That is the, that is that game winning moment for any athlete that you practice and work to put yourself in a situation to where you know, you have the ball in your hands, you have the puck on your stick, and you you get a chance to do something special, and he did, and the the play, the reaction, the the everything that happened after the game, we, we talk about that, and it's just, uh, it's, it's pretty cool to see him reflect a little bit on the, the hard work he's put in and stuff, and it, and it paying off, so that's, was two good interviews tonight, man. It was a couple good, uh, couple good young men to talk to. Again, I can't be more thankful for Big Loss just letting us come in and, and take over the fireman room. This is the second week in a row now where there's been some young kids here before we got started and walking through and looking around. And it's this is a cool spot if you're if you want to come somewhere that's not the the brochacho, you know, team affliction barbed wire tattoo muscle 
dipshit bar scene. This is this is a cool place to come have a beer. It's laid back. There are no TVs. There's some kick-ass music on low in the background, and you can just chill. Ranch and Roost. I'm staring right at it. If you want to get you a smash burger and some fries, go order it. Hell, they'll bring it in here to you. Have a couple beers and just visit with your buddies. I know uh, a big thing they've got going now, and it, it's growing, is the trivia night they do on Tuesdays. Some of the hockey kids come down here, and then there are other other games they do throughout the week too again you, you can check their facebook page and get into that there so i'm going to follow pretty much the same criteria as we have every episode we've done so far we're going to get to a pair of cool interviews but first we're going to check out with some help from the voice of the wild Kevin Geis, let's go over the uh, Wilds weekend that was. Here we go. From Lincoln, North Dakota, so everybody will get things strapped back up. The the uh, Quaker in their road blues with prairie gold numerals and uh, blue and gold and white socks. The Wild in their uh, special appreciation Gillette College Foundation jerseys. Got a uh, sponsored by Love Now Law, uh, longtime longtime supporters of the GHA and the Gillette Wild. So they got the. Uh, Gillette College pronghorn on the front. Got their name on the back. White numerals with the wild yeti head on the back bottom end and some aqua colored socks. So kind of a different look, but pretty cool look here. So we'll see. Get things underway here as the wild will skate left to right, south to north as Weisler's out to take the draw, but it comes away to the quake. But Trebojevic has it. Trebojevic. So league to take the draw against Tyler Hansen. Puck not moving, but finally taken away by Trebojevic as he looks, gets it centered to Solig. Solig comes down, far side to Norwegian. Norwegian back to Lean, Lean fires goal. Nice shot. Nice play, good work. Not much chance for Eastman right there. That was just nice play. Solig sent it to Norwegian. Norwegian fed it back. He was kind of low in the far corner. Fed it back right in the slot. And Tucker Lean was there. Pounded that one home. So Wild get on the board We're here with 10-11 to go. Tucker Lean, one of the top scorers in the whole league. So I Capo to get a stick in there. Knock that one, but kept in by Fanning. Fanning with the cage on here to you know, this week to protect the teeth a bit. I just centered down low to your cannon. Your cannon back in front. Oh, had Weasler down there, but Hodney goes picks it up, drops it down low, trying to get it to Weasler. Weasler with it, trying to get in front. Hodney trying to backhand it. Hack oh, Hodney with the goal. Hot Rod Hodney with the goal. He hasn't uh, had many opportunities, but uh, he did get one right there. So he kept at it, kept going for it, and got the goal. Yep. And, uh, Eastman wasn't able to cover those up, and uh, just kept at it. Yeah, was able to slide that one in. So. Good goal. Uh, he scored some goals or a goal, goal two earlier in the year and uh, still at it and going to get rewarded by it tonight. So. so, so much for the power play opportunity for the Wild. We'll have a minute and 49 of uh, four on four and then we'll have 11 seconds of power play for the Quake. But. Dedinsky with it, looking as Declan on the near side but fends his players off, comes right down, going to come walking in, tries to flip one over the goaltender, but can't. 
Logan Brown with it now as he's trying to get around Isaac Killing, but it comes to Declan. Declan's going to weave. Sends a, well, was going to send a shot, but lost it. Now it comes back in front and uh, got a goal. Sent that one five hole, came skating in and uh, saw the goal light on before I ever saw the puck in the net. But Declan Young with a even strength four on four goal. Sends a wild lead. <laughs> Three to nothing here. 15 10 to go in the third period. No penalty called right there, so I called a trip earlier in the game. Dudinsky sends it to the corner. Soli's going to stop it and sent kind of towards the net. Lean right back to Norwegian. Norwegian gets tripped and uh, another no call. <laughs> That's the way we'll end it, so 3-1. Wild with the victory. They'll uh, play these two teams. will meet again tomorrow night, but who the three stars of the game are tonight. Any guesses? We'll see what they say here. Jack Orchard, your third star of the game, picks up another win. Stop 22 of 23. 27, Tucker Lean with the initial goal. And we'll see, maybe Hod Rod Hodney will be the first star of the game with a game winning goal. Caleb Hodney, Hod Rod Hodney. So, smile on his face tonight. So, Good job to everybody, and then we'll see you again tomorrow night. Wild with the 3-1 victory. Wild end up with the... We're about ready to get things under the way as the Wild will skate left to right, south to north, and it's uh, tried to dump in by Capo, but can't. Norwegian circles around, walks in, shoots one. Wild gets one right there. Rebound. Uh, Seja just kept at it right there. Norwegian with the goal. Even strength goal. And the Wild took a while to score last night, but uh, on the board a lot sooner tonight. So two minutes and 26 seconds gone here in this first period. Norwegian just kept at that one. Uh, initial play. Battling and uh, Hansen down low, tying things up as Capo joins in. Wild trying to come away with it and do. Isaac right in front, nice goal, Declan. Yeah, that was a nice feed. Isaac came sliding around. A couple of those uh, Quake players had been tied up in the corner, and Declan just slid down the far side of the slot right there and popped that one right over the top of the goaltender. So 23.1 seconds left to go here in this first period the wild able to extend their lead here nice shot by Declan nice feed Isaac goes down low Blake wheels fires bounces off a bounced off his own man right in front comes up high to guitard guitard to Blake Blake walks it in sends a shot trying to get a redirect and they did nice job I think Logan Dudinsky with the uh, redirect on that one but Blake walked that one in Slid that pass along the ice and uh, nice play right there. So even strength four on four with a uh, minute and one left on the penalties. Wild extend their lead to three to nothing here with 15.06 to go in the second period. Wild have their first power play opportunity the second period. Kept in. Baker with it now as he walks it into the corner and sends it around the wall near side to Isaac. Isaac with it. Gets it up high to Dudinsky. Dudinsky fires one. Oh, it's right there. Goal. Caleb Sanborn. Nice way to grab that one up and pound that one home. 
Dedinsky fired it up high. And uh, Falkenstrom made the save, but good job by uh, Sanborn to get that one gathered up and then was able to fire it back in and find the back of the net. So Wild able to respond uh, quickly here. Just a minute and five seconds after uh, Quake get a power play goal, the Wild are able to convert. So netting above the goal, that was DeForest off that faceoff win. DeForest with a quick shot, rising shot. Wild get a piece of, so face off again is picked up by Dudinsky, gets it to Guitard. Guitard over the far side. Pass ahead to Norwegian. Norwegian dumps it and then turns to give chase. But Solig after it down low. Solig with it. Right in front. Lean goal. Tucker didn't miss that one. Uh, nice goal. That was uh, good work by that line. Solig had it right at the side of the net and tried to kind of flip one in. Came sliding across right to Tucker. But just good, good work and good effort. So 9-11 to go here in the second period. The Wild extend their lead to 5-1. To Near side, Trebojevic had some traffic in front. Oh, Jackson Call took one off the inside of the skate right there, inside the leg. That hurt him. And then goal, Trebojevic right from the near side slot. Brock Trebojevic fired one in and the Wild score another power play goal. So two for three tonight. Nice play right there. So two minutes and 23 seconds gone here in this third period. The Wild get a power play goal. Fires one. Oh, Sanborn got just a little bit of piece of redirect, but it was wide. Isaac with it. Backhands it. Right there. Declan with another one. Isaac fired it in. Goaltender made a save. Came out to uh, Sanborn. Sanborn fired across, and Declan hammered that one home. So, that top line uh, taking over a little bit right there. 14.27 to go here in the third. Wild extend their leave. 7-1. to one. And then Eastman came out and dove for that one. Blake with a shot. That good save by Eastman. Blake after it again, though. Gets it across. Nice goal right there. Tucker Lean. Blake gives it to Lean. Uh, good work. Good effort right there. Eastman made a lot of saves. He's kind of shaking his head. Uh, no fault of his. He was uh, he was playing hard down there and made a lot of good saves. But Wild just kept turning it in and kept bringing it on. So flip it up to himself, but just shot right in there by Fanning, but went off of Osman's stick into the corner. Declan with a shot right there, and that's the Hattie. And the hats do come down, so Declan right in the uh, right in the slot right there, and he's able to fire that one home. Just the Wild keeping it in the zone and just pushing and pushing and keep working. So the referee goes to pick up the hats, but. against the Badlands Sabres and then uh, four straight away games against Butte and Badlands but that's going to end this one so Wild's going to get a 9-1 victory here they gave up one goal last night gave up one tonight only the third star of the game number 19 Caleb Sanborn very good game as he always plays just very solid with a goal and a three assists. So twenty-seven Tucker Lean, two goals and two assists. 
Very nice game by Tucker Lean. Just uh, the lean machine and the first star tonight. The hat hat trick and an assist. Number 14, uh, Declan Young. So congratulations to him. Very, very solid in net tonight for uh, Turek. You know, he didn't face a lot of shots. It says here that he faced 14 for the night. The Wild end up with 68, it says. They, uh, they had 24 in the first. Okay, the freshest faced Logan Dudinsky. Yep. Am I saying that right? Yep. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. Welcome to Gillette. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Okay, so let's talk about you've been here six games, so about a month. Yep. Okay, how do you end up in Gillette? What what happens to, to get you down here? Um, well, I, I haven't played hockey in two years. Uh, I just COVID, everything kind of messed, messed it up. And um, so I was just going to school back home, and then uh, I've, I've been buddies with Tucker for a while. He said that like they needed like another D down here and so Hayes called me and was like hey like you just want to come, come finish out the season with this and I was like yeah sure why not. Okay so you're Eagle River Alaska as well. Yep. Okay cool. So what the hell have you been doing then for two years? Just going to school. Okay. Yeah. What do you want to be when you grow up? Uh, a pilot. Oh no way yeah. right on. Mm -hmm. So what's uh, how, how does hockey get you there or, or are you pausing that? To play hockey? Or yeah, still pause and to pause not to play hockey for now. And okay. then probably, I don't know what I'm doing next year now, but my plan was to go to MSU and uh, join their aviation program and be a pilot. Okay, yeah, so that is that, are you, are you talking uh, commercial stuff, yeah. private stuff? Like what's the, yeah, what's commercial. the game plan? Yeah, there? like fly for Alaska, Delta, that's the goal. Okay, what got you into that? Like when did you um, decide you first wanted to be a pilot? Well, like, let's see. I don't know. Um, my dad was an aviation major at the University of North Dakota, and he ended up not being a pilot. Uh, but so he's always been big into uh, flying and stuff, and all my friends fly, and I've got two friends that are already pilots right now. Um, just got their commercial ratings and are trying to get jobs flying for people. And aviation's really big in Alaska. Like, I don't know. I feel like half the people that I know all have their pilot's license and have small airplanes and fly around and go hunting and fishing and with their planes and stuff. So it's just, I don't know. Is that the main the main part of it up there is, is sport of the hunting and fishing? Yeah, island? yeah, a big part, yeah. I have an uncle that went up years ago and mm -hmm. him a big ass bear. Really? And that's- the, Where at? Uh, it's a black bear or brown bear? Uh, whatever the grizzly is. Yeah. It was 10, oh. like 10 foot two tall and 10 foot five. Yeah, I probably went. Show you some pictures after. Yeah, I probably went to Kodiak or like the Alaska Peninsula. They flew him in somewhere, dropped him off. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, it was right at dark. They told him, "Whatever you do, do not shoot him in the shoulder. Hit him right in the shoulder." Really? Uh, yeah. They told him so not to shoot him in the shoulder. Well, he told him not to hit him in the shoulder blade. I guess. Oh. Whatever he huh. did, all he did was piss it off. <laughs> And so they actually didn't go in that night because it got dark, uh -huh. went in and, and found him the next morning. So, gotcha. but yeah, it was the deal where they flew in. So that must be where I'm at in Southeast Colorado. It's a lot of like aerial, like uh, crop dusters and stuff. Like oh that. yeah. Uh -huh. So that's kind of the thing, but up there. Yeah. Like, so my buddy got his uh, commercial ratings two years ago. And like last summer he was flying for a lodge, flying up uh, guys to go fishing and hunting all summer. And um, yeah, so that's like a big, Big way to build hours up there is to get a job flying for a lodge. When's the first time you, you went up? Like, do you remember the first time um, you got to go up and, and take controls or something? Small plane? Um, probably like three years ago. Okay. Yeah, with uh, one of my buddies that had like their license, we just went up and I got to fly around for like an hour. And it, yeah, it was cool. Okay, so you show up here, you're you're 6'2", yeah. so you, you, you stick out, you're like seven foot on skates. <laughs> so you, you've obviously kept yourself in shape. Uh -huh. So was was getting back into hockey in the back of your mind well, or so did like, you give it up on it? I mean, I would play like beer league back home and stuff. Like okay. just like every Wednesday and Thursday night. Um, and then my brother plays, so we go and skate like outside at like the outdoor rink all the time. So I was skating, but just not at a fast paced high level. Um, and no, I'd kind of given up on just on it all together, I'm playing competitively and just was going to have fun with it, but this is a... So are you in communications in with Tucker the whole time? Like, are you guys... Uh, are you yeah, good we're buddies but yeah. Okay. yeah, we're good buddies. So you knew kind of how well things were going down here? Yeah. Kind of following along? Mm -hmm. Sort of.
Okay. Yeah, and then he, he called me and told me that you guys are, I don't know what the record was at that time, 20 something and two or whatever. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And uh, so that had a really good, good group of guys down here and so just you felt right. Down your first weekend's against Sheridan, yeah. which is kind of a little warm up, yeah. and then you head into the the Helena weekend. Yeah. So did you know coming down that you were kind of getting yourself into something that was going to be like that that weekend with Helena? Uh, that's what Tucker told me. He's like, yeah, like your first weekend will be against Sheridan. It'll be a good warm up, and then we play Helena, which is like the top team in the division, and they beat us twice. So it'll be be fast paced right away, basically. So when in your Kind of the, the the hockey life and stuff. Uh-huh. Where did where did that Helena weekend rank on like like big games and atmosphere um, that you've played in before? Played in a few big high school hockey games. Like we played in like the CIC championship, which is like our our town's championship for high school hockey against like a rival school. Okay, and that was really big. Like there's I think there's four kids that played in that game that are now playing uh, D1. Um, one at Notre Dame. One at Mankato, when at Providence, so there was really good hockey. Yeah, yeah. And then um, I play. Let's see. Um, all my U18 games were pretty fast, like that. Um, I played in like one real mall game, which is fast, obviously. Um, a few exhibition games uh, in the North American League, and so it was, it was up there, but it wasn't too crazy. I don't think. Was that? So when you when you get back, is that something that, with the two years off, did you notice a change just in the speed of the game? Like especially with Helena, did it did it seem faster than you remembered, or was it was it maybe not as fast as you thought, or um, quite what you thought? I think it would be? I think the first like the first period was seemed really fast, and then I just kind of like settled back into everything, and it was fine after that. But yeah, I, I think the first period felt felt fast. From our standpoint, it was. The first ten minutes was worrisome because they yeah. had the puck mm-hmm. in the zone a lot. Yeah, definitely. And I, I think maybe if they get one early, it, it changes everything. Yeah. But you guys withstood it, and then you kind of dominated them the mm-hmm. rest of the weekend. You, you played in their end. Yeah. And it, that seemed to have flipped everything for their demeanor, even with both the games going to OT and whatnot. I think when they left Saturday night, they were significantly less confident. Yeah, than I agree. That, that I agree. Ten minutes Friday. I think they would be even less confident too if we didn't look, like let up two goals and let them back in the game. Yeah, <laughs> but that, you know that's that's the ebbs and flows though of, of. Yeah, that's true. Good, the, they're a good hockey team. Yeah, they are. So, yeah, they are. And, and so are you guys. So mm-hmm. it was it was really fun to watch. So one thing I've asked all the guys that mm-hmm. have come on this thing so far all year is your first your first memory of hockey you say you have a brother is it an older brother no younger okay younger yeah. brother yeah so were you the first one to get into hockey oh uh, yeah first uh, of the siblings yeah siblings okay. yeah so what's yeah, my your dad earliest played. memory of, of when you first Ooh. when you first went out and started playing um i kind of remember my first game ever it was just like we were five and we played there's a mall in town it's like a big 10-story mall or whatever and um, it's got a rink in the middle. It's like a little half rink. And when, like I played my very first game there. And I think I scored like two goals or something like that. I guess that'd be my first memory. And were you hooked on it? Like when you when you first started playing? The yeah, game? yeah. I I loved it always. And like I mean I'm a defenseman now, but like and mites or whatever. Like everybody would kind of like go and swarm the puck, and I would always be like the one guy that was just like back and. The moms were yelling at because you were knocking their kids over. Yeah, I know. I, I would just like kind of like stay back from the pile and wait for the puck to pop out because. It it was always would, yeah. That way. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Of, what other sports were you playing up there growing up? Uh, I played baseball growing up. I played soccer when I was really young, but I played baseball up until like 10th grade. Yeah, and then like they kept wanting us to show up like two hours early for games, to have like a full practice before, and like I was like, this sucks. I just want to go fishing. Like, <laughs> yeah, you don't want to. Yeah. Do so what other? Uh, what other hobby you talk about? The fishing, the hunting. Yeah, the fishing. The outdoors guy. I'm yeah, playing. yeah. Um, I fish and hunt all the time. Um, hike, ski, um, fishing and hunting are probably like my two favorite. Um, yeah, I've shot seven or eight bears. Okay. Tons of caribou. Finally got my first moose. What's the caribou taste like? It's really good. Is it? Yeah, okay. it's really good. Um, I think moose is better. My dad thinks caribou is better, but I think moose is better. Um, yeah, um, I shot my first moose finally this year because I wasn't playing hockey. 
which is cool. Um, yeah, because moose season's like September, and I was always playing hockey, and yeah, was, so. Gotcha. Got so, my first moose. <clears throat> have you ever almost been? Has a bear almost got you before? Um, like, you I've been charged. Okay, what's that? Like, like? once. Okay, do you piss your pants? Um, <laughs> no, not too bad. Um, me and my buddy, we have like a bear bait station, so you bring in like dog food, and you like bait okay. bears into the yeah. yeah. So we like we float into like our bait station on a river and it's like a three hour float and we had something to do that night. I think like my buddy's working so we drive up there, float the river, it's like one o'clock in the morning like when we get there. We haven't been there in a week, so okay. we wanna uh, dark as hell. Yeah, I mean but it's not that dark because it's like June and it doesn't okay. really get that it's like twilight ish. Okay. And That's crazy. So we wanted to rebate it because we hadn't been there in a week and I'm sure they cleaned it out. Um so my buddy's carrying like the 50 pound bag of dog food and I'm in front with the gun. So he's bait. Yeah. <laughs> and and uh, so we're walking up the trail and it's like really super thick stuff, like like underbrush, it's like this high and can't see anything. And um, we're walking up there and I was like, hey, did you hear that? And he's like, no, I didn't hear anything. And I was like, it sounded like a cub's going up a tree. And he's like, oh really? I was like, yeah, I don't know. Could be nothing. So we keep walking and then like just hear like, a, like a big huff and then brush breaking and you could tell she was coming at us and we just like slowly started backing up backing up and she never really like got the, that close where we could see her but I mean I think she was probably like 10 yards away just like a false so charge have, like are you holding a pistol to no uh, what no have? rifle it's okay, a gotcha. yeah yeah 300 okay um yeah I want to say that's what he it, I think it was his was a 300 H&H &H, I think that yeah he's with, so okay yeah I can't imagine we uh we, we do some baiting at home, but it's for coyotes. You know? Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, not a totally different yeah. kind of situation there. Yeah. So, first impressions of Gillette. Did you did you know anything about it when you headed down here? Were you were you coming regardless? Or, like, if you'd have gotten down here and were like, ah, no, I'm going. No, home. yeah, like, if I like, came down here and didn't like it or something like that, I was just going to go home. I was like, okay. yeah, whatever, you know, like, wasn't really right. But, yeah, um, I like the rink. Um, super nice. I've heard like a lot of teams in the teams in this division don't have nice rinks. Like they're just kind of crappy. Yeah, old. No, that's when you get up to Montana. That's yeah, that's just, There's not the money. Like, yeah, you find weird. Like, yeah, it's not the infrastructure and stuff of their rinks. They just haven't put it in like they have mm -hmm. here. Sheridan, uh, Cody's decent, but it still isn't quite as nice as what Sheridan we have here. Uh -huh. I haven't been over to Rapid Cities, but looking at it, it seems like it's okay too. So, but the yeah, the Montana ones just don't don't seem as nice. Yeah. Yeah, like the ring's super nice, and then we got like GPT, obviously, and that's uh, that's awesome. And then the gym but, is awesome too. So all the facilities are really nice. All the people are really nice. The guys, uh, a lot of them have talked about the the Gillette physical therapy aspect of it, and then we yeah, go to the rec center. Is that is that something that's that's big from a like building a program standpoint? To yeah, I think so. Guys definitely. Get, yeah, definitely. It's not something you're going to get everywhere else. No, definitely not. And like you treat your players right, and they'll be happy and come back and want to stay and then tell their buddies to come because they're having a good time and so yeah I think it's huge could you sense the the camaraderie and stuff with the guys it, it seems like a really uh the little bit that i am around them just at the games and afterwards and stuff they all seem real cool yeah I'm definitely sure it's no different than brothers and stuff there's guys you get on each other's mm -hmm. nerves and, and shit like that yeah but you never see it so it's it really feels like there's a lot of cohesiveness and stuff. Could could you sense that early when you got here? Yeah, definitely. Like I definitely could tell that everybody was like it was a tight knit group, and I don't feel like anybody's really like excluded from the group. Everybody's kind of in, and so it's good. Yeah. Um, now, have you been on teams where it's been the other way? I've been on teams where there's like it's very clicky. You know, there's oh, like yeah. there's like five or six guys that are like super close, and like everybody else is kind of like have like their own like smaller group. But yeah, I think here everybody's kind of one big group. And I mean, there's like guys that are better friends with certain people and stuff, Absolutely. but I mean, that's just kind of how it is. But yeah, I've definitely been on teams, teams before where it's very clicky and like not everybody's included in the stuff, but. And I haven't been able to get any of the guys come on and, and just say he's a dipshit. Yeah. But Ethan, Ethan seems very genuine and very, like I don't think he bullshits with you guys. So is it cool that he's is he very open and honest kind of about expectations yeah. and, and what we're going to do and is that nice when you're when you're coming definitely out yeah kind of knowing what you're yeah like after for? the first weekend i i like went to his office i was like so how oh, you see you play like 
how do you think I played? Is there anything I need to change and fix? He told me a few things I needed to work on and two different. And yeah, so he's very direct and to the point. He won't bullshit you, which is good. Yeah, because like a lot of coaches will just sit there and blow smoke up your ass, basically. Yeah, to get you down and get you yeah, ex- signed up mm-hmm. and get you paying and, and doing all that. Yeah, this exactly. Do you have a favorite barn, I'll call it? That's what the rink? It's called. Do you have a favorite rink at, at home that you. Oh, what was your favorite place yeah. to play growing up? Um, the McDonald Center. It's like our rink that's. It's in Eagle River. It's. I think it's the nicest rink in Anchorage. Okay. Like, the best ice, um, cleanest. It's always super clean. Showers are always hot. Um, yeah, and I just obviously grew up playing there, so that's my favorite. We there was some discussion this weekend on. Uh, uh, I got my daughters on the high school girls team here. Mm-hmm. We played at Rock Pile, and then we played at Spirit Hall Friday uh, Friday night Saturday morning. One of the moms was talking about I've never ice skated in my life. <laughs> is there is there a difference in ice? hard ice soft ice like can you is there a difference in the quality and which is better yeah i think i like hard ice better um there's definitely a difference soft ice gets torn up a lot easier and like gets snow built up on it and stuff super easy so yeah i like hard ice colder rinks um just like like the game moves faster on like hard ice i think okay yeah Okay, so there is a there is a difference. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So definitely. yeah, see, I, I don't I don't know yeah. jack shit about it. So, how old are you? No, or twenty. Okay, so twenty. Is this is this it for you as a, a junior? Can you come back? No, nope, can't come back. So you're this is it. Yeah, this is it. This yep. is your last run. Yeah, exactly. That's kind of like the cool thing. I was like, yeah, it's like three months. I'll come down here, finish it out, and still go to school online. Um, take all my classes online. So yeah. Okay, why well, it. I'm not surprised by the the character of the guys that, that Ethan's brought down. You 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 fit the mold very well. <laughs> Thank you, you. you. You're going to school. You're driven to what you want to do when you grow up. Where did that come from? Like who who's probably had the most influence on you growing up? Kind of with just your demeanor, your attitude, and all that. Where did that the character? Where did that come? from? Definitely my dad. Yeah, okay. he's very type A. Um, He's in the army for oh, twenty. Oh, that's a ass in. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not 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 too bad, but like, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, there's nothing wrong with. Okay, yeah, he was I in. Took some ass weapons, so yeah. Um, he was in the army for twenty one years. Um, he's an officer, um, but yeah, he's very driven. He always pushed me to get my stuff done, keep going on stuff because I'm kind of lazy sometimes. You know, big big. Uh, what's the word? Um, Pet peeve. No. Um, Procrastinator. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah I'm yeah. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. Okay. And he always pushes me and like to do this, to do this, to get this done. So yeah, definitely him. And he's just a great guy all around. Okay, so this will this will be the last thing. I appreciate you you guys coming down here. You got uh, you go Butte mm-hmm. this weekend. So you got the long bus ride, mm-hmm. and then you come back. You got two more with Helena. Yep. So uh, well, a couple more things. Uh, how important, well, first of all, you can't let up against Helena. I don't know no. what the hell you guys were doing Friday night against Yellowstone. No, yeah. That was, that was, <laughs> that, that was rough. You got the win, but it was, no, I was a little worried at the start. Honestly, I don't think we played that bad. We just had a really hard time scoring goals. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, like, I don't think we played no, you terrible. The puck. But yeah. Yeah. And you never really were in danger. You were in there in probably 75 or yeah, oh, of the time. Yeah. Oh, I would agree. It just seemed the last little bit that where the pucks have been going in the net, mm-hmm. it, just, it just wasn't happening. Sometimes it's just those nights, so I guess. So shit happens sometimes. Yeah, okay. it does. Uh, last thing, we're going to let you go. I know one thing that the, uh, the, uh, the and this is coming from a, a guy with three daughters, <laughs> the uh, the curly hair is something the girls are going to notice. <laughs> so where did it, where did that come from? Where did the locks, where did you uh, get the from? My mom's side, yeah. Okay. Um, her, her mom has curly hair, and I guess okay. somehow I got Is there it. any treatment? Are you doing anything to no. it? That just, just no, just washing it, throwing yeah. it on it, and going? Washing, put some conditioner in there like every other day or something like that, yeah. And okay, so not so special, go. that's just all natural. You yep, all natural, yep. Awesome. Dude, I appreciate the time. Yep. Welcome to Gillette. Thank you. So we're glad to have you. Good luck moving forward. Thanks. Thanks, man.
back the first recurring guest that we're going to have audio of, Tristan Baker. So thank you for coming back again. Yep. Uh, we, we've made some uh, adjustments now, so we're going to be able to hear uh, what we're talking about now. So I'm excited about that. I think is it what your grandma is going to be excited about that? Was, I, was she's I little, don't know. Someone had commented on me to get the audio fixed, and it was on yours. So I think uh, it might have been grandma, but we're, we're getting it taken care of right I now. I had no idea. So I want to go back to the Helena overtime when that – when that pass is sauced and you get it on your stick. Yeah. Do you remember anything about that 45 seconds right there? And did take yeah. me back to like how cool that was. Okay, so basically I saw Sky get the puck at about the hash marks along the wall. And I noticed that the guy back, the guy that they had back was a forward. I was like, oh, this guy doesn't know how to play defense. So I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna take a chance. And when I saw Sky get around them, I was just waiting for the pass and I get this pass and I hear the crowd just going crazy for a couple seconds before I even go in and shoot. And then as I shot, the crowd was like basically went silent for maybe like half a second. And then after I scored, it just erupted. That shit crazy. Yeah. yeah, so it's cool from sometimes, sometimes I don't always get to see like the cool shit that happens, especially when you guys, it seems like you guys always score when we're trying to make an adjustment to something or we're answering a question or we're sitting down there. Yeah. I got to see, like, as the, as the pass happened and I watched everyone stand up, yeah. it, it, like, I wish there was video from where we were because mm -hmm. it was so cool. Mm -hmm. Like, as, as soon as that pass comes, it everybody, like, instantly yeah. starts to stand up and then you go, boom, you hit it. Mm -hmm. Is that something, as a, as a young hockey player, is that the, the equivalent of a, of, a, of a basketball player, you know, hitting a three at the buzzer or hitting a home walk off home run? And is that something like, is that the hockey play you kind of work on daydreaming that I'm going to get a breakaway I mean, for a game winner? I mean, it's definitely something you dream about as a little kid and then you don't really realize until after it happens, which has been pretty cool for me. I think it's cool you have such a, a good recollection of it because I can see that yeah. also being a complete blackout moment where yeah. you just. You go back and watch it, maybe bits and pieces go, but that was, yeah, all, everything about that was was awesome. Mm -hmm. So that, the weekend, getting Helena down here, you guys healthy, did that turn out the way you guys wanted it to, the way you thought it was gonna, or any lessons you guys learned there? Uh, I mean, I mean, we got two, we, we got four points, so that's what we wanted, but at the same time, we don't wanna go to overtime, because that gives them a point. But um, at the end of the day, we won both games, so, that's ultimately what we wanted. What do you feel is the, maybe the cause or the issue or what needs cleaned up with that, the the giving up the two goal lead and letting them back in it? Like what, what lessons did you guys learn there? Or is it just, well, sometimes that happens or, or how do you guys, how do you approach that? Well, for one, you can't, can't ever be satisfied. Okay. And um, I think at times we were up three on both games. I think we sat back a little bit more didn't really try as hard to score goals. We just tried not to let them score any goals, which sometimes it's not the best approach. I think especially um, with all the firepower that we do have, I don't think that's our best approach, but um, we'll learn from it and hopefully we do better next time. So it's almost position. like the, the same thing as when you see a, a, like a football team go to a prevent defense. You can, yeah. sometimes you'll see a team start to collapse yeah. the shit in hockey and maybe not attack as much mm -hmm. and get caught on their heels. Yep. Did, has Ethan, did he talk any about the, the two goal stuff or does he know you guys know and is letting kind of the leadership of the team talk about it or how much, like how much breakdown did you actually do uh, of that aspect of the weekend? I mean, in the moment it wasn't, we stopped worrying about it because we're like, we're gonna go get another goal. Like we gotta focus on the next 10, five, 10 minutes, whatever is left. But uh, yeah, we did talk about it and hopefully we can improve that the next time we're in that position against a good team like Helena. When we had you here early on, it was kind of looking forward to where we are right now in the season. And mm -hmm. we knew if everything kind of went chalk, it was going to be you guys and Helena. So now we are to not quite the that that weekend with them. You guys still got to go to Butte, and Butte's much improved yep. from what they've been in the past. I think if they stick with, with, with their coach and stuff, I, I can see Butte improving a lot over the next couple of years. So you don't want to go up there and do something dumb and, no. and, and drop one this weekend. 
Can't afford to. Can't afford to. But looking back from three months ago to now, like how cool is it to be in the spot you guys are in right now? Oh, it's super awesome. Um, I don't know, really know how to explain it, but it's it's a pretty cool feeling right now. It makes, it, there, there has to probably been times, I assume, in your career, it, it's no different than a job or, or whatever, where it's just like, man, I don't, I don't want to go to the ring today. Like, you know what yeah, I mean? They're out of now, dog I days. assume you guys are just, you're ready to get to practice and get shit going. Yeah, for sure. I mean, there are dog days, you know, it's after a tough weekend, you're tired, first practice back. You, you want to be at the rink, but you're just so mentally tired that, I don't know, it's just, we just call them the dog days and it's junior hockey, you kind of get, kind of get through it just like a job. Yeah, because this is part of where you've been doing it long enough now, you're, you're kind of used to this length of the season. Yeah. But some of the younger guys that have come on, this is probably the most hockey they've played oh, probably of a winter. Sure. Probably for sure. I think, I don't know how long their seasons are, but I mean, I've played 50 to 60 games the last four years, so. Yeah, so you're, you're kind of conditioned mentally yeah. to, to be where you're at. Mm -hmm. When we talked first, there was not as much of the, the season stuff to, yeah. to talk about. We kind of got back into to kind of your youth stuff. Mm -hmm. So I want to rehash some of that because the audio was just not any good. So mm -hmm. talk about your kind of your youth stuff and what got you into hockey because you're from california yeah okay so was it was hockey a big deal in in clovis where you were or, or kind of how did all that come to fruition um so i live in clovis it's just outside of fresno fresno is basically it's central california okay and uh we used to have an east coast hockey league team just like rapid city they were called the fresno falcons and we had them until about 2009 2010 i think and um so i grew up i had two older brothers and ever since I can remember, I was going to Falcon games. Uh, I always get told stories that when I was only like a few months old, I would go to games and like my parents didn't have to worry about me crying or any of that the whole time. You were so, going to behave for a couple hours. Yeah. Okay. Do you have a, uh, a memory of anything from early on that, that like caught your attention about kind of what it was about the game that you enjoyed or like what, what was it that drew you to hockey? I don't know. I was always surrounded by it. So my, neither of my parents played hockey, but um, they were always engaged with it, especially when Gretzky came out to California. That sure helps. And then my oldest brother and my oldest cousin got into hockey, and so that kind of got me into it Okay, as well. so how old are you then when they're, when they're getting into it? Like, where are you at age-wise? Uh, so they were into it before I was even born. Gotcha. Okay. So, so my oldest brother is about six years older than me, five or six, and then my cousin's about seven or eight. Okay. So I mean, my cousin was probably eleven when I started skating, and my brother was probably about nine, or yeah, about nine or ten. What's your earliest hockey memory? Like, what do you? What, oh, what, what's the the first thing going back? What do you remember about it? I don't know. I just remember doing all the learn to skate programs. That's all. That's I think that's the earliest I can go back. Now, is that stuff that you're doing with the with the teams that are there? Like, are they how you guys help out with the Parks and Rec? Are there hockey players that are helping you guys, or, or how is uh, that structured? I mean, I don't really remember. I mean, it was 17 years ago now. Okay. So, but um, I do remember one guy in particular. His name is Glenn Hines. He helps me and all my brothers learn how to skate. He still does it, and he used to play for the Falcons. So. Um, and I think they used to have former Falcons out there, and then the Monsters, they're the junior team there. They do that. Um, they do that as well. What was it like talking to some of the Minnesota kids, the North Dakota kids? They had a, it was a lot of a lot of hockey in a small area. Small, yeah. Were you were you traveling a lot, or how did it work for you on your games and stuff growing up? Was it all? club was there high school hockey there or kind of what was that structure when you're in like that 12 to 16 year old range um what kind of hockey were you playing so it was mostly just bantams and midgets and they had midget 16s and they had midget 18s and then a few years ago they went to high school but that didn't really pan out the way i think california wanted it to because um kind of similar to here not all the kids go to the same high school gotcha especially so like in fresno we're pulling kids that live 45 minutes away and either way because our closest travel is probably san jose 
about okay. two and a half hours. Gotcha. So you were having to you were having to do some trips. Yeah. So stuff to to, to um, get to play. Yeah. Also, California they broke it down in like two sections. So Fresno was considered like Northern California, and then so we would play all the teams in NorCal like San Jose, San Francisco. Um, Redwood City, those kind of places. They're all all those teams are like in the Bay Area, essentially. So, how do you end up out here? Like, what what leads to you being in Gillette? Because you've been here. This is my second year yeah, here. Yeah, second year. So how do you? How do you? God, it seems like you've been here longer, but I guess that mm-hmm. is that is I've been it. Playing so, juniors for a while. Yeah. Though. So how do you? How do you end up out here? Um. So when Ethan Hayes was when he was in Great Falls as the assistant coach. Mm-hmm. Um, one of my buddies that I grew up with and my brothers grew up with, his name's Luke Richardson. He played for Ethan in Great Falls, and he he went to college Hayes' last year in Great Falls, and so um, Hayes gave me a call and asked if I wanted to come out. Here I am. Did you know like it's? I think it's really cool what what Ethan has done here. So you might have the the longest relationship with him of any of the guys that have known him. Like, is it, did you know he'd be able to do this? And is it, is it cool watching him kind of, kind of build this team and, and do what you guys are doing? Yeah, it, is, it has been super cool. I mean, he, I remember when I signed, basically he was like, so we're building off of this guy from last year and these guys and so forth. And he's like, with you in the mix, and maybe a year or two, we'll be, we'll be really good. Is that kind of the the structure because you you've been around junior hockey a little bit now, is that is it like a two or three year deal for when you get a, a coach that knows what he's doing and he comes into a community? Does it does it take a, a year or two for him to get his guys and come in? And is that does that kind of seem to be the structure of how it works? I don't think so because I mean junior hockey, it's not like college hockey to where like you can't you can trade guys you can't just you can't be trading college hockey obviously so you might have one kid that comes that's really good and he might be an age out he'll come play for you for a year and then he goes to school so it's basically i think it depends on how you recruit that season and how many guys you're able to bring back because i remember years when i played in fresno one year we were really good the next year they were really bad and then the next year they were really good and then the next year really good and just I don't know how to explain it, but well, I think... I've seen the ebbs and flows of it here. So, like, mm-hmm. the, the first year that I kind of volunteered and helped out, the, the Quake made Yellowstone was... Dude, they were just piss-pounding everybody. Yeah. And then it's like, it it was the next year, it wasn't even the same. Yeah. And that was my first well-known the coach can, was there. And then he moved on, and he took those guys. And then this same thing kind of what happened with Sheridan last year. And then that whole other situation there yeah. happened. And then now you've seen... We're now Helen is up top, you guys are up top, and it just seems like it's these coaches and their relationships and their ability to get good guys in and then mm-hmm. their ability to get them to play together. And I, I also think it um, also makes Hayes' job a lot easier that he's had guys return for their third season and maybe even their – I think Easton may have played four, maybe three. Yeah. I'm not sure, but that sure helps because it kind of shows that um, guys like it here. They enjoy they enjoy the town they enjoy the community that kind of stuff. Have you have you taken to Gillette? You you seem to like it, but is there? Yeah. A, I mean, do, do you enjoy do you enjoy the aspects of being out here? Yeah, I do. I I honestly left town because I wanted to try something different, and I got a whole something different. Take yeah, no, I assume, I assume this is substantially <laughs> different. I get to go the other way. I don't know where uh, where Fresno and stuff is from Riverside. How far apart are we? Uh, you know how far apart? Is that a little bit of distance? I know Riverside's four, inland. It's about four hours north, four or five hours north. You, maybe you were six. four hours north of there. Yeah. Gotcha. I got I'm go. like, I'm about four hours north of LA and about two and a half hours south of San Jose. Gotcha. Okay. A couple weeks I got to like, Riverside for a week. You just week, so put a dot like right in the middle. Okay. That's where you're Or, at. you know where Yosemite's at? Oh, yeah. Yep. I'm like an hour and a half from Yosemite. Okay. Gotcha. So you were out kind of kind of away from all the riffraff. And yeah. I'm like right in the middle. I'm like two hours from the beach too. So I'm right in that middle area. What do you miss? Is there is there one thing you wish you could have brought? Chipotle. Chipotle, the number one thing. Not in and out. Not any of that. Oh, in and out's close there too, though. Okay, so it's, there's, it, there's it's a lot close. of places I bring out here. Nice. Oh, I know one thing I want to ask you too. So the the other thing that was really cool uh, was watching the after the game 
when you hit that OT winner and you've got the hard hat on and you're sitting on the stick rack and all the the boys and girls, you know, mm -hmm. four to nine years old are standing around you. Just how cool is that? Uh, it's super cool because I remember I used to be one of those kids when I was their age watching the monsters play. So I, it was really cool for me to be on the other side of that. Do you enjoy the the helping with the camel can? And you can say no. We've had guys say no before. I know you but, have, but yeah. I do enjoy it. So <laughs> is that like, do you think that's part of the successful, maybe with the successful part of the junior program is the buy-in from you guys working with the, the younger kids and then the, the kids coming to the games and is Absolutely. That, that's a cool relationship to Absolutely, because it makes the kids want to play hockey more. I mean, we're basically, we're their hockey role model, essentially. Yeah, like, and that's... Be like that guy. You guys, it's very cool having a relationship with GHA and then the, the volunteer relationship I have with you guys. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I, I do mean it. You guys are a cool group that... It's cool to watch you guys interact with the kids. It's, it's cool to watch the fans. It, it's really happened like the last three weeks. I knew Helen would be a big draw. I, I was yeah. I was shocked there was 700 some people Saturday night. Like I, I, I thought Against that Helena? Was, no, there was a thousand Helena. I was going to say there was like Yeah, but Saturday night against Yellowstone, there was seven. There was 500 Friday, 700 Saturday. So the, they're going to show up now. Yeah. The rest, you've got the... We've the, got the attention of the community now. Yeah, and that and that and that's that's way cool. I am looking forward to, you guys have clinched, so mm -hmm. playoff-wise. Yeah. So... What, what is it like moving forward? That I assume that you want to have home ice advantage over Helena. Is that Absolutely. something you guys, you're talking Absolutely. about it and that's the goal. I don't want to go there for two games. No, I, I don't blame you. So no. that's kind of moving forward, that's, that's the goal. Yeah, so basically what that means is we need to win out. Gotcha, so you we guys. Need, we need, we, we basically can't drop a game. Which or it's gonna be tough, I mean if we, even if we split with Helena, it's it might be tough to get that first. Yeah, seed I think it right goes now. into stupid tiebreakers then after that. Yeah, because they they you have a point on them, but they have a game less than you. Yeah, so, so we essentially need to to beat them both times to know that we're gonna be first place. Okay, so last thing then, and I'll, I will let you go. I appreciate you coming down and doing this mm -hmm. for, the, for the second time. Uh, is it cool to know? that everything's in your court. If you went out, you're the number one seed, you get what you want. Is that is that kind of what you've worked for? Oh, up absolutely. Because last year we are in a completely different situation. We needed teams to lose if we wanted to jump Great Falls. Because I think at the time we didn't have the opportunity to play them again like we do with Helena. Um, which if we weren't playing Helena, it would be a lot harder to control our own destiny. But we do, and so we yeah, take Butte first and then focus on Helen in the following week. Gotcha. So you know what you need to do. Yep. Cool. Dude, I appreciate you guys coming down tonight. So yeah, you got it. Thank you very much. Yep. Good luck moving forward, man. Thank you. I told you. Logan and Tristan, couple cool, couple cool young men. Ethan's, Ethan's, Ethan's doing well. Uh, high character guys, uh, great hockey players. They're, they're excited about this push here at the end. So... Let's talk about what we got coming up. Boys are on the road. Going to get back on, not the bus, they're going to get back on a bus. Going to get on a bus and head to Butte. I meant when I said that Butte's headed in the right direction. So this is, you can't take your foot off the gas here. Any of the cliches you want to say, they got to go up there, to, they got to be focused. Let's get four points, let's stay healthy, let's get home and get ready for that weekend against Helena. So the 4th and 5th, I believe, that first weekend in February, Helena will be back, and that's going to be, I don't want to say it's going to be for all the marbles, but a large part of the marbles. If you want to have home ice through the entire set of playoffs, and like Tristan said, if everything holds out and we go chalk through the playoffs, that that's going to determine whether that last series with Helena is two games up there or two games down here and, and we would rather have we would rather have the two games down here. I'm impressed very impressed with the job that that you guys have done as a crowd showing up. I was I was shocked there were seven hundred people there Saturday. 
I didn't know with the game being so close on Friday night if maybe people would hold off and wait until Helena showed up here in a couple weekends. But you guys turned out and you you, you saw you saw a good game. Uh, I mean, it was an ass whooping Saturday, but you guys showed up and supported, and that's cool. And as as you could tell from from the two young men tonight, they can feel it, they can sense it, and they know they know you guys are ex are getting excited about them, and and it means a lot to them. And you're starting to see that in the product that they are putting on the ice. So, with that, back going to wrap her up. Appreciate you guys tuning in. Check out NA3HL dot com for all your statistics all of the standings everything you need to know we will probably do a recap next week and hoping to get the uh hoping to get the other young man who i totally botched the audio on if we can i'm going to try to get declan down here and kind of go over uh, over his accolades and what he's accomplished and chat with him a bit before heading into that and then the hell in the weekend. So appreciate you guys tuning in. See you next week.